Good morning everybody and welcome to tea time on the river. Yes, I know the river water is loud so I will speak even louder. Today I want to talk about the battle. The battle is the Lord. This is very true. And every time he told his people to go to battle, he told them the battle was the Lord. But they still had to fight. And every time they went to harvest, they still had to get up early. Probably at the crack of dawn, like 4 a.m. And then they worked all day long till the sun went down. It's a time of work. I mean, planting the seeds can be difficult, can be hard. And then you wait through the winter and you do other things to get prepared for the harvest. But when the harvest comes, like we have to be focused on the harvest. And when the battle comes, we need to be focused on the battle. We need to gird ourselves with our armor. But we need to take out our sword. And there are battles in our life. Sometimes people, they think that they're not supposed to do something because there's a struggle and there's a battle. I don't agree with that. Because everything that I have acquired from the Lord, there's been a battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a battle of believing, it's a battle of, of speaking things, declaring things, activity. There's activity involved. See, there was activity involved for the Israelites when they went to the Promised Land. They had to take out their sword, and I hate to say it, but they had to kill a lot of people. And that, but none of them got killed. And that is a huge thing, because usually when you go to battle, like half your people get killed, and half their people get killed, and hopefully more than half of their people get killed so that you win. But when the battle is the Lord, there's victory without death. Victory without death to God's people. There's victory without death to us. When we do that, what God has called us to do. And when we draw in the harvest of the seeds that we planted, there's a lot of work to be done before we get to sit back and relax and enjoy what we have harvested. I mean, the, the grain has to be go to the threshing floor in the olden days. And I guess in the new days, you have to store your crops somewhere. Sometimes we, we harvest tomatoes just from our garden. We have to do something with them. Make spaghetti sauce, make chili, do something, or, or those tomatoes are gonna go bad. So there's, there's continual work to get prepared to rest in the winter. And the winter is a time of rest. And I think that sometimes we get upset because we don't see any fruit, thing, any new growth in our lives. But there is importance in waiting and resting because it prepares us for spring. And it gets us ready because we go, oh man, I'd love to just take a, an apple off the tree instead of having to eat applesauce. Now today we get food from all over the world, so we, we kind of don't really have a whole lot of appreciation for that, like I think people in the olden days did. But let's put some context. There are old things in our life that we've been eating, preparing us for the new, and that's great. And there are things, once we've been prepared for the new, and we've lived out those new things, and we've, we've harvested what God has done in our life, then we get to rest again. So right now, if you're ready for the harvest, work. get prepared and get energized and get excited when the sun comes up and get your rest when the sun goes down because ministry is work. If you're in the ministry, under, if you're cooking in the kitchen, you're not sitting in the restaurant, then understand, yes, you get to eat some of what you're cooking, some of what the other cooks are cooking, but really, you're not preparing it for yourself, you're preparing it for others. And when they put a smile on their face and they're sitting back and relaxing with their family because you've made good food for them, pastors when you've, and ministers, when you prepared a good spiritual meal for your congregations, for those that you witness to one-on-one, -on -one, you studied the Word of God and you worship God, understand it's well done, good and faithful servant when someone else gets benefits. All right, hallelujah. I hope that made some sense so that I'm getting myself prepared to work, prepared. I'm going through the battle right now, but I know that I get to enjoy the harvest as well. All right, God bless you.